Uh, hey, uh, welcome to the show. Um, we want to uh, put out a special episode uh, separate from the, the re regular episodes uh, to just say goodbye because we didn't get to do it in person to our very good friend, uh, Grant Wall. Yeah, if, uh, if anybody listening to this or watching this has not uh, heard the news, obviously uh, just legendary American soccer journalist, American sports journalist, yeah. Grant Wall, um, uh, passed away in Qatar. Um, he was, he collapsed in the, at the end uh, or towards the end of the game of, uh, Argentina and Netherlands. And I mean, it, it, it doesn't get any more shocking than this. I mean, Grant Wall, um, I mean, I, I think people are seeing so many stories about him, uh, so many kind things he has done and and said, and and so many people he's supported, uh, you know, in in a, a, a more than twenty plus year career, and and we were one of those uh, beneficiaries. Uh, yeah, Grant Wall very was much so. unbelievably kind to us. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I'm looking at all the just uh stories and people talking about him and i i'm starting to realize like oh i would have never met that person if it wasn't for grant i wouldn't have met that person that person undoubtedly that as i looked at the the some of the successes successful periods of our career and opportunities we've been given i mean 90 percent of them have some form of connection to grant wall having put us in a room with those folks or introduced us to those people. And I think, you know, somebody posted a story. They were um, an editor uh, when the when the Sports Illustrated layoffs happened, which was the angriest I've ever seen Grant Wall. Um, I, this was news to me, but someone tweeted. He called me and said, here's eight people, writers or editors or people within the business you have to hire right now and went line by line through each of their resumes with them. And the person said to Grant, uh, it's been about three hours since the layoffs. How many of these calls have you already made? And he said eight, and I have 10 more. And I've never, I've, there's no story I can tell you that gives you a better idea of who this person really was behind the writing and behind the stories. You know, when we started, I had a conversation with someone who said like, oh, look out for Grant Wall. He don't really like new people in the business. He likes to keep things for himself. And I've never experience anything further from the truth from the moment we communicated with him once he knew who we were and what we did it was like off to the races this man found so many ways to try to support us even you know i'm looking back through dms and text messages um and every time we would do something or post something that we did he would always message and be like hey man you guys are you guys are killing it or happy to see that you guys are doing well or, oh, he's in one of the things he said, you know, the game needs more people like you. I mean, and it's got nothing to do with us. It's just this is who he was with everyone that he saw that had some type of skill that would benefit the game or, or the sport in this country. That's exactly who he was. Yeah. And, you know, it is kind of wild. I mean, I remember first when I first like interacted with Grant and I think I first, the first time we saw him maybe was like at. MLS Cup somewhere. No, remember uh, we, so remember we couldn't afford to go to MLS Cup. We had just gotten press, press passes for the first time in our career. We had no idea. A fan told us to do it. Uh, and I had my wife call and pretend to be our manager to get them approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's like, yeah, I got to get the Cooligans flight. And the lady was like, of course, hold on. Uh, got us our press passes. We didn't know what to do. We also couldn't afford a hotel room for an extra day. So we took the 6 a.m. flight and waiting in the, uh, in the Delta area walks in grand wall and i remember i elbowed you and i go yo yo that's grand wall should we say something and you were like i don't know i'm like yo let's not bother him he's like a real journalist <laughs> and i just remember how like official it felt that he was yeah. there and we're like on the same flight it made me feel like you know i had the little press ticket in my fedora <laughs> you know what i mean the um yeah th that was the our early experiences with him was like yo this guy's a legend. We shouldn't he's even so be tall. talking. <laughs> he's so tall. He's right. That's also the first thing. You're like, damn, dude, I didn't think you were that this tall. You're very yeah. tall. Um, but once we got to know Grant, I mean, I, I, I experienced it all the time where I'm just like, 
hanging out watching Champions League games or I, I watched the, the, the Copa America uh, final uh, with him uh, at, at Smithfield. And I'm just like, yo, Grant Wall's my friend. This is crazy. It's like, wild. This dude is like the, the dude who introduced LeBron James to the world in his Sports Illustrated article. He just has so many uh, sports and just historical milestones. Um, and and it's just like you it, it feels surreal that he's like championing you and he's supportive. And, and we, we I saw Grant at the U.S. Um, uh, MNT roster reveal just the, the a few days. What was it? A few days prior or the or after when oh after when we went to the Tim Howard yeah. uh, uh, and Brianna Pinto which was like the for, day before he left for the World Cup yeah that the US Soccer Foundation had an event grant invited us and and he did this all the time he invited us to so many places and then when we were there it wasn't like oh you know i i invited you what he grant would be like any anyone we would ever be around or meet, he'd be like, "Hey, this is Christian. This is Alexis. They're the cool guys. Have you heard of them? These guys are really funny. They do so many things for for." American Even at that soccer. event, he was yeah, on the microphone just- interviewing Tim Howard, and he go, he said something. He goes, "I'm not going to be as funny as the Cooligans, everyone." And I was like, "What?" Yeah. Um. So it's 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 crazy that um that he was that kind to us, and and he he very much did not need to be. Um. And that he's also fucking Grant Wall, right? Like it's crazy. Um, and and so we're like eternally grateful. And this news is just so difficult and heartbreaking for so many people. Um, I mean, like Alexis mentioned, he's just had such an impact on this sport and, and sports reporting. And and we all saw the coverage. Uh, um, you know, he he was trying. He was calling out. Uh, uh, Qatar for for the, the you know their anti LGBT stances, uh, um, you know banning rainbows and all this other stuff. I mean the dude is w- just one of the most fearless and courageous people I've ever met. And one one of the days before uh, he left, I I was at Smithfield for I think watching a Champions League game, and and. You know, I was reading his work and he, he was doing all the, you know, he went to Qatar a couple months ago and, and he wrote a, a piece about the migrant workers. And I, all I said was, yes, dude, just be careful out there. That's all I said. I was just like, just because what you do is just so, so important. And it's, you know, what happens in, in these scenarios is like, look, I don't know what happened. Nobody knows exactly what happened. And, and we're not here to speculate. And, and, you know, it, 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 but it's, it's really difficult and, and, and heartbreaking. And right now I'm just thinking about his, his family, his wife, his wife uh, I mean, his two dogs. Um, and you, you just, it, it's just such a shock and just so much heartbreak. And, and I mean, all we wanted to do is just take some time for, you know, Grant's been on our show several times and we wanted just to take some time to, I, I, you know, some people have reached out and said like, oh, um, you know, were you close to Grant? And we were. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it's... It wasn't a secret either. I mean... Yeah, yeah. It you just, know, Christian mentioned the, the Champions League stuff. It wasn't like a networking event. The guy lived close to uh, a bar and there was a table outside that he felt safe sitting at uh, because he took uh, COVID very seriously, his wife being one of the premier infectious disease doctors in the world uh will let you you know will make you take these things uh, very serious uh and he had no there was no reason to invite us other than the fact that he wanted to spend time with us uh, but eventually what happens is in fact speaking of you know the 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 way he would put you in a room with people who could help your career the reason we're on metal arc is because of those watch parties uh there was uh, one of the other people he invited happened to be somebody influential enough to mention us and pitch us to Metal Arc right as we were about to leave Fubo. And that's what started that conversation that led to us being on this network, a, a peer, a coworker with Grant. Um, it just, it, there was no need. And he would constantly invite us to these. And especially uh, for me, which was very difficult because I had the, the complex show at the time. So I had to miss a lot of them, but he never stopped inviting. He never stopped saying, hey, if something changes, come by. Or if you get done early, come by. 
And it wasn't for like, yo, you got to meet these people. It was like, he wanted to hang out with people that he knew from the business yeah. that he can hang out with and that he had a good time with. And it just so happens that those people would, you would see people exchanging information at these, at these watch parties and, 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 you know, getting hired for gigs. And it was like, he was, he, he was just very happy. And I don't think I've ever told um, this story on the show because, you know, it's private to him. He, I, I, a lot of you may remember he did an, an interview or he did a, a whole expose on Tiras Bowl which is a very dangerous place for Americans to go. It's actually on the do not travel list. It's not a recognized country. I don't even know how you get in there. The, it's crazy. And it's, uh, the, allegedly, a lot of the folks that are there are there to be uh, arms dealers and runners for the Russian government. I'm not, again, allegedly, I don't know, but that's what he went to investigate. Uh, as sheriff, one of the teams that plays in Tiras uh beat uh, Real Madrid. There was a lot of you know additional interest in this small country. Uh, he went and just started interviewing people and driving around with, with fixers. And so I remember messaging him like, dude, you're out of your mind. Like I joked on the show that I was going to buy a retirement house in Tears Bowl because it's like one of the world's most dangerous places to go. He actually went, yeah. you know, there were no jokes. He went and he did on the ground. He did the, the important work of investigating what was going on there. Uh, and I, what an honor. A couple of weeks later, after he comes back, I get a text from him. I'm in the shower. I get out and I see a text. A missed call from Grant and a text was very rare. And it says, it's urgent, but not an emergency. Call me as soon as you get this. It's Grant. He just got back from Tears Bowl. I'm thinking it is an emergency, but he doesn't want to make me scared. Yeah. So I call and I'm like, what are you in Cuba? Like, you know, like, what do you have? Was Raul Castro have a gun in your head and you need me to translate? What is Grant Wall doing that you need me? And it was an opportunity to be a part of a documentary about uh, it, the, the part that they were on. It was focusing on, you know, some of the people that, that played in the World Cup from New Jersey and they wanted to get a New Jersey perspective. And he immediately pushed and, and pushed for me to be the one to be on it. And from what I heard from one of the producers was the, the person in charge of the documentary at the time was like, ah, I don't really know. I don't really know this guy. We don't need a comedian on here. We want someone who knows the sport. And Grant pushed and pushed for me to be a part of that. It's being a part of a documentary, yeah. and it was important to him. When I first got in there, he said, hey, be yourself. There's no one in this documentary like you. You know, we, yeah, you're funny. You're this, you're that. You're from Jersey. You don't have to try to be an expert here. Be yourself. He pulled me aside and made sure that I was comfortable. And every time I made a wild joke, I remember him in the side laughing and holding his, holding his face with the mask because he didn't want to be loud on, on, on camera laughing and ruin the, ruin the, the, the interview. And that's just an example of the type of person he was. It was like he knew it would be good for the sport to get certain people involved, and he worked hard to get them involved. Yeah, man. Look, and one of, the, one of the biggest uh, blessings you could say about anybody is that the people who spend the most time with them love them. And, you know, I've had some conversations with Lee, uh, who was a producer of his over at Sports Illustrated for a long time, a good friend of ours as well. Uh, and he is obviously beside himself. I'll let him... Uh, tell you that uh, on his own through his social media. But, you know, you, you travel with somebody for a long time. Christian's traveled with me for like three days and he's like, I've had enough. Uh, you know, for, to travel with someone through multiple countries for weeks and weeks at a time and to leave that wanting to spend more time with that person, it, that should tell you a lot about the kind of person that Grant Wall was behind the stories. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. And I also want to say, I want to reiterate what Christian said. And, you know, my heart is with, is with Celine, his wife. I've only got the opportunity to meet her once. Uh, but I can, I can only imagine the anguish of being one of the most premier, you know, infectious disease experts and then to have your husband suffering from that and you think he's okay and then all of a sudden he's not. I can't imagine what that's like to have your loved one, you know, knowing you, you could possibly have done something had you been there, but it, it didn't work out that way. She, she must be really going through it. And yeah, I, hope, it, I hope she gets to be a part of whatever happens next so all of that speculation can go away. And, and, and I just want to know that he didn't die in pain because he really was just a, a good person and a very healthy, too. The last time we hung out with him was the night before he went out to guitar. I believe he was flying to guitar the next day. I don't want to mis, mis, uh, mis mention that, but it was at that, that thing. He ate a burger and he took the, bu the top bun off. And I remember saying, like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, well, you know, I'm trying to be healthy. And I'm like, dog, eat the burger. You know, <laughs> eat the top bun, bro. Yeah. He even shared his fries with me. <laughs> Because he didn't want to eat them all. Okay, yeah, <laughs> just another example of his kindness. Uh, He's so selfless, bro. Yeah, he shared his no, look, with me. Th this is just you know, uh, throughout this World Cup, th this is not 
this is not the conversation we expected to be having. This is truly unbelievable. It, it's when I, you know, heard the news at first, I'm like, this is, this literally makes no sense. Um, so that, it, that, it doesn't, it still doesn't connect. Yeah. I, look, it, we're, we're still trying to process this stuff, but, um, we wanted to, to uh, take the time to just to, you know, uh, give this man his flowers, man. I mean, it, it, look, I, and I, I think a lot of people appreciated his work, um, while he was alive. I, but again, the, the thing is, I, you know, I just have in my mind, if I could be half as courageous as Grant Wall, that would be remarkable in my mind. Uh, Without a and, doubt. So, Without a doubt. Um, you know, you you heard Rob Stone, you heard Stu Holden, you heard John Strong, you heard all, countless journalists online um, uh, talk about him. You know, nobody has a negative word uh, to say about him. And even if people have had, uh, you know, uh, uh, arguments with him or, or disagreements, uh, yeah, th there's even me there's even messages or DMs being like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come at you like that. And th th so there's even that level of contrition uh, on, on his part. So um, just an incredible guy. And this is just so heartbreaking. And I I wanted to take the time to do this. We Alexis, and I wanted to take the time to do this in, in you know, and, and really flesh out these feelings uh, and that we're still kind of going through. Um but we're still going to continue on doing the show throughout this World Cup. Um, but we, we had to take the time to do this. So I appreciate everybody uh, for listening to us, watching us, supporting us. Um, you know, th this is you know, we try to bring some levity into this game. And sometimes th there isn't it that always isn't, you know, the opportunity is not always there uh, to do that. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have anything else to say, man. Um, um, I do. I, I do. I want to say uh, thank you to the Metal Ark family uh, who, you know, through texts and slacks and whatnot, have been uh, really supportive and really helpful with, you know, bits of information. Obviously, he's a co-worker. He has a show on this network. Uh, so everyone is, is feeling it uh, just as much. Uh, even people who've only recently met him uh, understand the importance of his work. If there's one thing... You know, I don't really believe in the theory that this person died with they doing what they loved. I don't really believe that. Um, you know, and and probably if he could have been given a chance, you know, maybe he'd want to be close to to family and his wife. Uh, but you know, to know that there were friends around him who who you know jumped to his aid and, and made sure that he got the help that he needed, but unfortunately wasn't enough. But it, that's that's got to weigh heavy on them and and i want to send a shout out to them i want to send a shout out to celine as well um if there's a way we can help in any way shape or form please let us know and the last thing i want to say is for those of you who have reached out to us fans friends who didn't know him only knew him from his writing and reached out and said hey i'm sorry i mean i the one benefit that came from this the one silver lining and through tragedy usually these things happen is I started receiving messages from other people in the sports industry, in the soccer world, uh, one letting me know how Grant touched them and also thanking me for something we did or I did or a message I sent or someone I connected them to. And I started sending messages to other people, just letting them know what they mean to me and, and what and the one moment maybe I forgot to thank them for something or something they did that they don't realize, you know, carried with me for a long time or, or I use as an inspiration when you know, all this stuff weighs on heavily on you or, you know, the industry says no to you so many times. And I've used certain things that people have said to me or a connection someone helped me make um, has helped. All those moments, we all just started trading these beautiful messages back and forth. And to me, it's like that is that I hope that continues. I hope that becomes a lasting legacy of someone uh, like Grant Wall, who did those things so selflessly, selflessly and didn't need to. And it was really no benefit to him other than, you know, he knew he had a platform and he knew he had some authority and power in this business. And if he could use it to help somebody, he would, uh, which was a beautiful thing. And for those of you who didn't know him, those of you who who didn't get a chance to meet him or have a, a line of communication with him or even a conversation with him, I do want you to know that everyone in the business knew he was that guy. He was that guy in the sports world. He When, when he wrote rip through every barrier that this sport hasn't been able to get over. 
Like Christian said, he wrote the LeBron James 17-year-old cover story at Sports Illustrated. You don't just send anyone to do that. Yeah. You send someone like Grant. Grant was that guy. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully his legacy continues. And if there's something that I'm going to take away from what he did is I'm going to make sure that I take my time to thank the people around me. I'm going to make sure that I take my time to help people around me who deserve that helping hand or who need that helping hand or who have talent, but it's very difficult to mind your way through this business. I promise you, Grant, I'm going to do that because you did that without anybody asking. He could have been a dick to us easily. We probably at that time even deserved for someone at his ilk to be. A I mean, maybe you, not me. I, I know. know. Well, all right. You don't have to throw me. <laughs> uh, but you're probably right. Uh, uh, but honestly, he didn't have to help us. And he did it because he liked spending time with us and he knew we cared about the sport. There was no other reason. Yeah. Absolutely uh, incredible human being. And I'm going to it. Co- uh, yeah. It costs nothing to be, you know, to be kind. And uh, he very much did that. So, um, all right, we we will move on and and we will try to you know, uh, you know, do honorable work the way Grant did. Um, you know that's that's still our mission, even though we make uh, stupid dick jokes from time to time. But even I think Grant w- would have been a fan. For- <laughs> Grant loved them. Grant <laughs> laughed. And by the way, first ever guest of our TV show, and we had never interviewed him before. Yeah, yeah. there was no reason for him to do it. Exactly. Um, Thank you, Grant. Um, and again, our our thoughts are with uh, uh, Grant's wife and family. And yeah, from like Alexis mentioned, from the Meadowlark family, we just are absolutely heartbroken. And, you know, we're all uh, here to uh, support each other. So thank you so much for uh, listening to this. Uh, we, we love you. Thank you uh, for, for all the support. Uh, and even 